Oh hi! Well, I thought I could make a handheld with a Raspberry Pi as well. Not really better, but I have this uh, cartridge reader. I thought it would be a good project to integrate that and work on it a bit more because it doesn't work that well. For uh, Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Classic games. So you can play actual games in the console. A shirt! Cool! This is not the parts package though, so I had to start with designing the case. In about two or three minutes, I will go to 3DK Berlin. They have a store here in Berlin. I want to find a plastic that looks like it would be perfect for a Game Boy clone. And I'll compare some gray colors. 50 shades of Game Boy gray. I'll take you with me. Game Boy. So right now it's uh, minus two degrees in Berlin, so it's gonna be cold. Yes, that's the first time I'm filming me getting dressed. Berlin is only three stations away. So let's take the S-Bahn. So here we are, PLA everywhere. They were kind enough to let me film in their store. Didn't take me long to find the color I want. Yeah, stimmt, es passt perfekt witzigerweise. The PLA that I bought doesn't work. I'm not sure why. Well, my printer doesn't work with the PLA. It's the first time that I use PLA with the Zortrex M200. The only thing that could work is a new hot end. I need a plan B with the filament. Probably gonna be some white tone or ivory maybe. Sadly not the gray I just bought. Eh, bummer. I've even prepared a cardboard tablet holder to make a time lapse, which I have never done before with 3D printing. I wonder why. So, there's that. If you don't have buttons from old consoles that you tried to repair and then they broke on you, you can buy buttons on websites and they even give you options of um, packages where you choose the NES style or the DMG style and everything. My package sadly didn't arrive yet. I need to sort up a second cartridge reader PCB. I've ordered them at oshpark.com and got some purple goodness. Starting with hand soldering the AT90 USB 1287, I soon had to remove some solder with wick. With some flux and a hot air station, I was able to move the chip to a better position. Cleaning up the flux with tips dipped in isopropanol alcohol is a good idea. With the multimeter I then checked on the socket for any shorts. I continued with some passive parts like caps and resistors. Soldering 0603 parts isn't that hard with the right tweezers. Oh look, and now I have two of them. Yay!
For my cartridge PCB, I have to decide between those two options I have. Should I take the Game Boy Advanced cartridge slot? It already has the perfect cutout to take the Game Boy Advance games. The second option I have is from a Super Game Boy. It doesn't fit the Game Boy Advance game from the start, but the pinout is correct for my boards. Let's prox on the cutout then. This is my university and this is the place where I failed the university. And I'm standing here for the coffee shop I've worked in after the university. And this is where we cut the screen bezel. Matze is inspecting both sheets of acrylic plastic and prepares the files for the laser to cut out the screen bezels. The sparks you can see fly here are reflections of the grid and you can see that later in the bezel as well. Now it's time for the inkjet printer to print on transparent stickers. That's why the label is upside down. <laughs> Afterwards, we glued down a white sticker on top of the other sticker. This way we give the colors a chance to shine against the black 3D printed parts. So now it's time to only cut out what we need. Here you can see the transparent sticker material we've used to print on. <laughs> Matze is also removing the insides of the screen. With the third attempt, we've used transfer foil to get the sticker of the other foil first. It's finally time to join the screen with the sticker. You can hear the air bubbles getting removed. The last step is to remove the transfer foil. Followed by the screen protector. Now look at that bezel. Doesn't it look shiny? Let's continue to solder the TFT friend to the Raspberry Pi. So this is what I have to solder. It's basically this pin, this pin, this pin, this pin, this. Also this. Yup, 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 yup. Let's solder the cable first to the Raspberry Pi, then cut the cable, strip the wire, add some solder, cut it short, and finally solder it to the TFT friend by Adafruit. So of course I have to do that with all the cables. I wasn't aware of the on-off pin that needed to be pulled high to make the display work, so... Uh, thanks for the, for the hint. <laughs> I mean, I, I was suspicious about the on-off thing, but uh, yeah, that was that was weird. As you might have guessed already, I've went with the Switch theme instead of the grey PLA. I need to glue everything together though before soldering. And this is what it looks like from the inside. The parts came in late after I've designed and printed this case, so there are no screw holes holding the pieces together. It's finally time to glue in the bezel. And turn it on, but the switch isn't there, Dave. It's, yep, you got it. Time lapse. So 
So let's try some classic Tetris. This sadly isn't from the cartridge though, it's just from a ROM I got from the interwebs. Yep, that's everything you get from the speakers right now. It's pretty weak, I know, but there are options. That was a fun project. The worst part is the cartridge reader. I was able to read some data of the cartridges, but my yeah the the scraper doesn't work the way it works with my MacBook. So now the data I get is like a bit shifted, and it's also scrambled in a weird way, and wasn't able to finish that in time. I still think it's it's solid. I I just have to work on the software. You can see the border here and that wouldn't have happened if I had the parts already. So then I, I would just see that okay I have some more space to make the black border bigger. I didn't have the parts when I designed the case so that was tricky. The screw holes of course. I tried to make some afterwards after I've printed everything and placed the parts. Yeah it just doesn't work. Most of the screws are just going into nothing. It also makes sense to have something to access everything that you want to debug. The shoulder buttons don't really work, it's just one side and the button doesn't have to go here but here. So you don't have to account for that long travel length of that side. The sound is uh, something to improve but yeah I'm pretty happy with the outcome of the of my first handheld console. I'm pretty sure the next one will be even better. I will publish everything that I've needed to um, make the display work. That was kind of a hassle. I've never done that before so it took me like 13 hours to make it work. Uh, connections, I had to rewire some. I had an offset of pins so that wasn't fun. Yeah and finally I got stuck on the on off pin that you need to pull high to make the display work. Thanks everyone for watching. Also, thanks to my mom for being the sun in the video. This was quite the experience. Yeah. That was a fun project. And record. Oh, we're still re oh, we're recording. Okay. The deadline got extended. That's really nice. Basically cool for everyone, I guess, because you have more time to work on it. But when the time got extended, I was already done uploading. Originally, I was a, a bit grumpy about it because I thought, okay, that's just two more days where I thought, okay, I have the time, but I actually don't have the time because there's real life stuff. Uh, blah, 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 whiny whiny stuff and yesterday I was sitting on the code again um, I was always missing half a byte and then I thought okay hey it's always the same part of it so maybe it's because the pins aren't actually set to an input and there's maybe a fuse that I have to set to make the pins actually work and indeed there was um, there were pins um, on that port that were used for JTAG so when I disable JTAG on the fuses my cartridge reader worked I was actually able to play the game from a cartridge. But I'm now in a bit more happier state. I mean, I could have faked it, but... Uh, okay, I've started it. Focus on the raspberry! Thanks. It would be so great if you can just fast forward that. But anyway, so the game is back in there. Isn't that cool? And it really is the game that I've put in here. Oh, also, um, I've never talked about the um, buttons board that I've designed for this. It was something that I've edited in to the part where my mom is uh, playing the sun. I mean, it's just measuring stuff with a caliper and then trying to figure out if they've used a number that makes sense, uh, whether they've used millimeters for for distance for the distance of buttons. It's mostly like something at, um, 12 millimeters or 16 millimeters for the d-pad. There's a gain setting. There's a solder jumper I can use on the um, Amplifier board that I'm using. Thank you, Mr. Autofocus What I really liked about the project is um, having the USB hub separatable. It actually helps quite a lot if you have a USB plug 
to just make sure that everything is um, working like it's supposed to be working. This way you can um, test everything with a computer. So if you use a USB socket um, on the Raspberry Pi, you can test the hub and actually at the keyboard. About that gain, always design with screw holes. Don't just glue in everything. That's what we're going with. So let's go with 15. I think that's that's the right choice for this. So I've added the jumper. What the f- I have no idea what happened. Ah, uh, of course there is. ROM start. I don't know why, but it, but it's in there. So this is probably the problem of all the cartridges at the moment. Bomberman and ROM start. Okay, I'm an idiot. <sighs> Let's try this. Restart emulation station. No. Let's try it like this to restart emulation system again yes what a hassle no it's too weird to tell you twice that uh, what's wrong about the project, so I'll just leave it with that. Thanks for the opportunity of the update and have a nice one. Enjoy the other contestants' movies and see you soon. Or not. Bye.